Welcome to one of the most mysterious and unexplored places on Earth. Um, but what's so special about that? It's just some icy peaks and the endless snowy expanse of Antarctica. Yeah, that's right, but there's still a planetary scale mystery here. No matter how hard you try, you won't see a hidden mountain range, giant, unexplored land where no human has ever set foot, and it lies under another layer of mountains. It's like a nesting doll, but the size of a continent. These mountains hide Antarctica secrets, and these secrets can tell us something awesome about the ancient history of our planet. This gigantic unexplored territory in Antarctica is called the Gambritsev Subglacial Mountains, and the layer of ice above keeps this place untouched by nature and people. It's like a land inside another land, and it hides more than just mountains. There are valleys, hills, and plains. The whole area is similar to the European Alps, but unfortunately, we can't enjoy the view. Those mountains were first discovered in 1958 using seismological instruments. More than half a century has passed since then, and this place still remains one of the most poorly studied tectonic objects on Earth. Why? Because it's ice. A lot of ice. Who knows, maybe there are some unknown ancient artifacts lying there. What if they're hiding a secret city or spaceships? It's unlikely, of course, but it would still be interesting to look there. Think about it. Hundreds or even thousands of miles of land that have remained unchanged for hundreds of millions of years. Even if no new species of animals or remains of an ancient civilization are there, this place still has a history. The history of the formation of continents on our planet. And scientists have already figured out some of this story. The mountains buried in Antarctica were originally like ordinary mountains, but as a result of a planetary scale event, they just… Wait a minute, have you ever wondered how mountain ranges are formed? We see them in real life, in movies, in photos on the internet. We climb them. But how did they appear? Mountains have not always existed on the planet in this form. They appeared as a result of a large-scale collision of tectonic plates. Two giant solid chunks of ground are moving toward each other, then crash, and boom! Millions of tons of the Earth's crust pile on top of each other, mix, and form ledges and gorges. And all this can last for millions of years. Yes, it's a disaster, but it's very slow. Some tectonic plates are still colliding. For example, the Himalayas continue to grow because the Indian and Eurasian plates are still ramming into each other. And this process began about 50 million years ago. The Gambritsev Mountains under ice experienced a similar event, only much earlier. An article in the journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters says that they appeared during the formation of the supercontinent Gondwana. Two giant pieces of land were separated by a boundless ocean. But then, about 700 million years ago, they collided and formed Gondwana. This supercontinent included the territories of modern Africa, South America, Australia, India, and Antarctica. The giant pieces crashed into each other and released a stream of hot, partially molten rock. This mass grew bigger and bigger, forming mountains. The temperature of those mountains grew, their mass increased, and at some point, Gondwana became unstable. The supercontinent began to collapse under its own weight. The hot rocks below the surface began to flow sideways as a result of a process called gravitational spreading. Take toothpaste and start squeezing it out of the tube. Approximately the same thing happened with billions of tons of red-hot rock. Ancient mountains in Antarctica appeared right during this catastrophic event. You've just watched a visual simulation of global events that took place hundreds of millions of years ago. It looks cool, but how did scientists figure it out? How did they see this planetary scale destruction? If the Gambritsev Mountains under ice is one of the most unexplored places in the world, then how could people find out its origin? The answer is simple. Tiny particles of rock have told us about the changing landscape of the planet. These are zircons, but scientists also call them 
time capsules. This mineral is very handy and resistant to mechanical and chemical influences. It's difficult to crush, it doesn't get affected by erosion, and it doesn't dissolve in water. And there's uranium inside it. This chemical element shows scientists the age of the rock. The fact is that uranium always decays into lead at the same rate. Scientists look at the ratio of uranium and lead and determine the age of minerals with great accuracy. Ok, this sounds a bit complicated. Here's a simple example. Imagine that each mountain belt is a clock that starts ticking at the moment of its formation, that is, after the collision of tectonic plates. After the rock forms, uranium begins its slow decay. The more time passes, the more uranium turns into lead. The rate of this decay is always the same. This decay can last for billions of years. The less uranium is in zircons and the more lead, the older the rock is. And this is how it happens in practice. Geologists take several rock samples. In a lab, they crush it to extract crystalline zircons. Geologists then dissolve the particles in acid to separate uranium from lead. Then they use a special device, a mass spectrometer that accelerates atoms and sorts them by mass. This is a rather complicated process, but the bottom line is that this device shows scientists the amount of uranium and lead. They look at the ratios of these two elements and calculate the age of the rock. Geologists took zircons from sandstones near the Gambertsev Mountains, studied those particles, looked at the level of uranium, and calculated the chronology of mountain formation. Then they compared the data obtained with the history of our planet and realized that the mountains buried in Antarctica appeared during the formation of the supercontinent Gondwana. But how did they find out that the supercontinent included Australia, India, and Africa? Zirconia from those Antarctic rocks turned out to be very similar to zirconium from those countries. That is, a long time ago, these three continents were together. So, the Gambertsev Mountains began to grow about 650 million years ago. About 580 million years ago, they reached the height of the Himalayas. And 80 million years later, they experienced the melting of the Earth's crust. And while most of the mountain ranges on the planet were changing and collapsing, the Gambertsev Mountains under ice remained untouched. Water, soil, wind, earthquakes, gravity, and other natural forces destroy mountain belts. This process is called erosion. But mountains buried in Antarctica haven't experienced anything like this. The cold temperature and the ice sheet around them kept this range unchanged. It's one of the best preserved ancient mountain belts on the planet. Ok, but why do we need to explore these mountains? What difference does it make that the supercontinent Gondwana collapsed in the past? It's possible that plants, frozen bodies of insects, or ancient bacteria have remained preserved under thick layers of ice. What about ancient animals? Many species could have lived on Gondwana. Studying ancient mountains in Antarctica can show us what the planet looked like about a half a billion years ago. When Antarctica was a green continent, what lived on it? What happened to this life? Is it possible to revive those ancient creatures after so many years? If scientists were able to calculate the date of the supercontinent's appearance using tiny particles, then imagine what they could find after examining this hidden mountain range. It all sounds very interesting. But there's one problem. To take a small piece of this unknown world, you need to drill through a lot of ice. You need to deliver heavy equipment to one of the most inaccessible continents in the world, build stations, obtain an energy source, and conduct large-scale research. It sounds incredibly expensive, so this hidden territory will probably remain a mystery for a long time. Let's just hope that some billionaire will want to find out Antarctica's secrets and arrange a large-scale expedition there. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.